Well, we got Tom Peterson with us today on Living Right with Dr. Ray, and this is a guy I've wanted on here for quite a while, because I've seen stuff, Tom. Catholics come home all over the place. You are the founder, the president. Catholics come home. International, right? Now it is, yeah. International. Nine languages. Can you, can figure you that? do nine languages? I can't, but people I hire can. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us, how did you decide yeah. that this is needed? I didn't. The good Lord decided for me. I went on a retreat 21 years ago that changed my life. I said, Lord, what do you want me to do with my life? And how cool he is that he calls us to use the very talents and interests he gives us to serve the church. So he said, use your talents. I gave you in advertising. And we started Catholics Come Home 21 years ago and Virtue Media Pro-Life. And I've, it's been an adventure ever since. What is the theme of Catholics Come Home? Welcoming and loving. So many people don't know what they didn't know. And our job is to merely put an appetizer out there, an invitation, if you will, so that people say, gee, I never thought about it that way. Let me look it up. And they go to the website. They find out more. In fact, a great example of that was the very first episode we had featuring a lady named Dr. Gloria Sampson from the Midwest who was 53 years an atheist. She went to teach communists in China how to speak English. And she said, I had a couple of kids and all, and I said, well, Dr. Sampson, when your kids got sick or in a car accident, didn't you pray for them? She said to me, shockingly, not even once. And I said, so what happened? You're obviously on my show, you came back. And she said, well, I retired in Vancouver and I'm watching TV, flipping through the channels, and up came a Catholics Come Home evangelical, as we call it, and it got my curiosity peaked. Then I saw a second, a third, and a fourth, which shows us the importance of fortitude and repetition, even in our faith life with neighbors. If they don't come back the first time, keep inviting them. And finally, she said, I went to the website, looked it up, because my curiosity as a college professor got the best of me, and before I knew it, I came back through the confessional came back through the confessional. Was she Catholic at one time? Yeah, born Catholic, away 53 years as an atheist. In high school, she said, you either do the religion thing right or you don't do it at all. And she laughed and said, so I didn't do it at all. And for 53 years, she was gone and praise God came back. So we have converts, reverts, atheists, and agnostics who never knew the faith, all as What's guests What's the on message? Show. What's the message? God loves you. He has a plan for your life. Uh, find out more. Simple invitation. An invitation of love and hope, and they're not getting it anywhere else. But she didn't think God loved her because there was no God. Well, at one point in her childhood, she might have. But things distract us, huh? Uh, the, the evil ones work in overtime to distract us, our kids, our grandkids, through all kinds of things. And he knows exactly how to bait our hooks with custom-made lures, as I say. And uh, he got Dr. Sampson with her, her academic pursuits, and she met a man says, oh, he was perfect for me. He was an atheist, too. So we got married in a Unitarian church so he wouldn't offend our parents who wanted us to get married in church. We put on the charade, and the pastor didn't care. The, the Unitarian pastor was happy marrying us as atheists. He didn't care. And uh, we put on the charade. But, you know, when she really thought about her life and what was missing, it was really God. And she went to the website, learned more, and said, I, 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 I need to go back to that childhood faith that I had once before. Those seeds were planted by the priests, the nuns in grade school, and through baptism. And they germinated through the Holy Spirit inviting her. What is so powerful about a 30-second spot? No. You know, we're sensory people. You know that better than I do. Uh, I'm an advertising guy, and uh, I know on one of your segments you talked about the power of advertising or subliminal messages. When you've got uh, compelling visuals, you've got compelling sounds, and we tested all this. We had focus groups saying, why do you like these ads? Well, they touched my heart when I heard the violins. And that guy's testimony, he was speaking what I often say or ask. Or the visuals, they reminded me of, of you know, when my grandson got, or grandson got baptized and I said, you know, I've been away for years, I think it's time for me to take another look. So sometimes the senses can be used by the evil one to pull us out of the church. We can harness the same power of visual cues, audio cues, and so forth to help invite people home. You've used the phrase, take another look, several times. Mm. Yeah. Is that kind of the advertising thrust? Just take a look. Well, you know what? Uh, it's called Catholics Come Home for a reason. Our target market are Catholics who have drifted away. 
and we're going to give them just a little invitation. We're not going to beat them over the head. We're not going to try to convince them in 30 seconds. But again, uh, take a little look, a little sample. And most people are willing to give us a few seconds of their time, a few seconds of their interest. And so that teaches us all we need to have a little elevator pitch. We need to have something that's kind and loving to help invite people home. And one thing I say when I speak at do parish missions or men's conferences or women's conferences is this. Nobody cares how much we know until they know how much we care. Nobody cares how much we know until they know how much we care. So that message that either we're putting out or these evangelicals are putting out has to be steeped in love and it has to be authentic. Millennials more than anything, and I know you've got a little segment coming up later on millennials and young people, they want authenticity. They don't want that 1970 fake stuff that we used to put out in advertising. They want authentic witnesses and they like Pope Francis for that reason. He helps the poor, washes the feet of women. He does things, lives simply. They like that part of him talking about the environment. He relates to them and they relate to him. Do you have uh, a sample of one of these? We do. Just happen to have Just one. Just happen <laughs> to have one with ya. Huh? It's one of my favorite. It features Coach Lou Holtz. We know him from Notre Dame fame and other things. Uh, devout in his faith. I heard him at a Legata summit and I said, I've got to write this spot that would be perfect for Coach Holtz. And I ran into him in the Los Angeles airport years later, and I said, Coach, I've got an ad I'd like you to do, and he did it. So we're going to see a sample of a spot where Coach is coaching us to heaven, the ultimate goal in life. Let's take some look on the monitor here. For victory in life, we've got to keep focused on the goal, and the goal is heaven. The key to winning is choosing to do God's will and love others with all you've got. Sacrifice, discipline, and prayer are essential. We gain strength through God's Word, and we receive grace from the sacraments. And when we fumble due to sin, and it's going to happen, confession puts us back on the field. So if you haven't been going to Mass weekly, get back in the game. We're saving your seat on the starting bench this Sunday. Welcome home. Quick sound bites, yep. a message that moves, and you don't have to hang with it, he just, he just keeps shifting to the benefits. Yeah, there's several pivot points in there, just like our epic ad, which has the history, beauty, spirituality, and truth of the Catholic faith over 2,000 years in a 30-second, 60-second, two-minute evangelical. And by hitting on these hot buttons, maybe one of them, or maybe one of the testimonials where there's four or five people just giving little sound bites in an ad, maybe just one of them might prick your heart where to do say, you, take Where do you run them? Oh, we were the first ever, and so far the first only uh, ever on national networks like CBS, NBC, major cable systems throughout the U.S., and now in nine foreign languages. In fact, in a couple weeks I'm going to Poland, and we're going to help them with Catholics Come Home because a lot of their young people are not going to church, and God bless them, they said, we don't want to end up like the rest of Europe. So pray for our Polish campaign. Uh, it'll be our first in Europe. Where do you get the money? Money comes from private donors, people who watch our EWTN television series, uh, from people in the pews. Everyone says, oh, the church has the money. We're the church. We're the ones who fund it. God, uh, his generosity is good to us. Our people are good to us, and we spend what we get. Obviously, you're getting more because you're spreading. It helps. Uh, so many people think that if people see it on TV, they'll fund it. Well, if you don't ask, you won't get it. But there are so many good-hearted people there. Almost every one of us has a child, a grandchild, somebody away from the church. It touches each of us personally. And if we can put these on the air, and a half a million people quantifiably have come home, and that's in the 12 dioceses who chose to count, the 40 who did Catholics come home, many of them didn't even count. So we don't know what the results are. But you know, Dr. Ray, the good shepherd Jesus would say we'd do it for even one. Even one. And you know what? That one might be your child. That one might be just the one that God loves us all infinitely. And we have to pray to help love all these people home. And that's what we call it. We don't call it evangelization. We call it we have to love somebody to heaven. Our family has spanned the centuries and the globe. With God's grace, we started hospitals to care for the sick. We established orphanages and helped the poor. We are the largest charitable organization on the planet, bringing comfort to those in need. We educate more children than any other institution. We developed the scientific method and founded the college system. We defend the dignity of human life and uphold marriage. Guided by the Holy Spirit, we compiled the Bible. We are transformed by sacred scripture and sacred tradition. 
which have guided us for 2,000 years. We are the Catholic Church, with over one billion in our family, sharing in the sacraments and fullness of the Christian faith. Jesus started our church when he said to Peter, the first pope, you are rock, and upon this rock I will build my church. So if you've been away from the Catholic Church, we invite you to take another look. Visit catholicscomehome.org today. We are Catholic. Welcome home. I think we probably got some questions because this is something that touches a lot of folks. Oh, yeah. Yes, ma'am. Hi, my name is Betty. And I have three children. And uh, my husband and I put them all through Catholic school, grade school, high school. One of them even went through college. And she and her brother are now both away from the church. Uh, my son is away, but not, but you know, not believing a lot of the things that we don't believe in. My daughter does believe and fell into that, like the more serious things that are just not right. right. She believes those things. Besides praying for them, what are some other ways that we might be able to get them back in kind of different levels to get them back to the church? Oh, complicated issue, and I think almost everyone watching this program has a loved one away, especially a child or a grandchild. Uh, millennials are tough. We have a website called CatholicsComeHome.com. So you know CatholicsComeHome.org for folks our age. Uh, but CatholicsComeHome.com was specifically designed for our children's age group, kind of that 18 to 35 range. And it speaks in their language with phrases they understand, with evangelicals that will relate to them, things they're looking for, their hot buttons. But the bottom line is prayer is number one, it's essential. But our prayer has to be not a frustrated prayer, not a, uh, a prayer of uh, begging God. You see, God loves those children more than we could ever love them. The Good Shepherd doesn't want to lose any of us. So he's constantly trying to uh, do good and invite them home. His mercy is endless, but our hearts have to be open to it. So what can we do as parents? Number one, we can't nag. They're going to run the other way. We all know that. That's psychology 101. But we can invite gently and not with an agenda, not trying to win. Oh, I got to get my kid back. But more like, Lord, you open the door. Use me today to help lead someone closer to you. And if it happens to be my child, great. If it happens to be someone else's child, fine. And we have to have that collective family mentality that maybe I'm not going to help my own daughter back, but maybe you'll help my daughter back and I might help your son back. And that's what we need to do more often is just to be those, uh, as St. Monica taught us, to have the fortitude to pray for, what, 20-some years, God bless her, uh, and wanted Augustine to come back. And what happened? Ambrose, a mentor, a little older, came into his life, and you know the rest of the story. They both became saints, and Augustine became a doctor of the church. So number one, fortitude. Never give up praying for your loved ones. And here's something a priest told me. When the priest at Mass elevates the precious blood of Jesus in the chalice, put that son and daughter in the precious blood and say, Lord, you care about them more, Jesus, than I do, than I could even love them. And I love them deeply. Please bring them home some way. Save them, Lord, some way through your mercy. And trust in that. Number two, um, pray for a mentor to come in their life. Number three, consider saying the surrender novena by Father uh, Delindo Rutolo. I've given out thousands of these at conferences and at parish missions. It really helps to set our hearts and our minds right so that we're not so distracted by it. We're not so frustrated by it. We're not falling to the devil's temptations uh, of despair by it. You see, because he loves to get us distracted from doing our mission by worrying so much about our kids. And it's our pride that wants them home at a certain time in a certain way. God's got it handled. And as Father Benedict Rochelle said, God bless him. He was one of your people. He had the psychology background and the faith. God bless him. God rest his soul. And he was my spiritual director for a while. I'm blessed to say that. He always said, thank God ahead of time. That means have the faith to know that God wants your child home too. So don't, don't lose the, the hope for that and know that that surrender novena can help bring back some of that joy in praying for them, knowing that God will never give up either. 